for our new season of the YLP podcast, the tip off show. We got some excellent stuff in store for you today. A special guest who uh, we've already been talking about prior prior to the show. Um, before we get started, I'm Ari Wickes, and I am joined by my new co-host, the one and only Oren Glickman. Oren, welcome to the show. We're excited to have you. When I say we, I mean me, and uh, you know, hopefully a lot of the viewers. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to it. And I'm going to just, you know, before we get into everything, I'm going to get into our sponsors who are, you know, make this podcast so possible. We have our Two main sponsors of the show right now for our Yeshiva League pod, podcast tip-off show number one, Holy Schnitzel. Holy Schnitzel is back for another year with us. They are, when you think of Eats, you know, you want to get some good meat grub. There are so many different locations, five towns, Staten Island, the city. Uh, I'm going to forget some because they're a franchise all over the place. And they just do a tremendous job with everything you want on Uber Eats. You can get the Holy Toasty, the Holy Schnitzel. I mean, you think about it, they have it, salads, meats, they do catering as well, and they are just a great supporter of the show. And uh, you know when you come into the five towns or the areas where they have it, the players are always looking to, to chow down, um, hopefully with a victory meal after at Holy Schnitzel. And our new sponsor this year is Gotta Get a Bagel. They are located in the five towns, and they are, I, I can talk on this personally, one of not only one of the best bagel stores around, the best bagel store and here in the five towns, but also catering. They do brises, bar mitzvah, shalashudas. Shal they do everything, and they do such a phenomenal job. I have used them myself personally, and uh, the great Joel Baruch is the, the owner of uh, Gotta Get a Bagel. Great store here, and uh, really unbelievable, everything you can get bagels, appetizing, whatever you want. They have it there, a great, great location in the five towns. And as for other sponsors, we have opportunities. Please uh, reach out to YLP on the Instagram, DM them, as they say, and we will uh, you know, talk about all the opportunities. So that was the exciting stuff, the sponsors. Now we're going to get into really the, uh, the nitty gritty of the show. So we have our first guest. We're going to bring on Joe Aaron of DRS, the senior uh, leader and superstar from DR DRS will be joining us in a minute. And we're going to, uh, you know, fire away with our questions and, uh, you know, really get into, uh, you know, all the fun stuff. So, Joe, he's keeping his, keeping his audience waiting. He's going to pop up in a second. We're going to get into it. Good. Is that a fat head of yourself on the wall? I say no. no, no, no. <laughs> well, I actually thought because it was a green jersey. Right. No, all right. No, no. I'm like, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. Joe, no, it's, 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 it's Luca. It's Luca. Right, right. All right. We figured that. Well, first of all, Joe. Welcome to the show. Obviously, you. you are our first guest this season, and we're going to get into why you're here. I mean, obviously, throughout Yeshiva basketball, I, I think since middle school, you were at YCQ, and you are already a name uh, to be reckoned with, not only because of your player, but your family and your brothers, and uh, a great a great foundation of, of basketball. Your mother, I mean, it, it's it's all over. Your dad, yeah. of course, <laughs> so you, you had a lot to, to live up to, and you've done a great job. So we obviously are bringing you on. You're the uh, superstar athlete of the week, and you're coming off the uh, the big MDY, the Mag and David preseason tournament. You guys won in the championship. You defeated uh, SAR after losing to them prior in the uh, in the playing in the uh, preliminary games, and you guys came out in the thriller in overtime. So we're gonna fire questions away. I'm gonna start, then Oren's gonna go, and yeah. you know, we know you can handle pressure. So let's talk about expectations coming into the season. You guys had a you were a solid team last year. But you were, you were really – you had a, a book binder was probably the, the best senior on your team, but you guys had a yeah. lot of firepower in the junior class and now your senior class, and you had a lot of good players coming up from the junior varsity. Tell us about your expectations going into the season and, uh, you know, where you are, are really hoping to end up and, and how you see that happening. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, like, the off season, our seniors, they're, they're stepping up. They're getting better, playing all the time. And then, I mean, like, our juniors coming up, it was a big difference. We got three juniors who are always on the court playing with us. And then we have Gaby, Mike, and Yitz. They're, they've been a huge help, and they're, like, contributing off and on the court. I mean, like, they're just – they're doing it all for us. And our seniors, they're just doing the normal. Like, they're still with us. They're just doing their job. And as they're going, like, the juniors are getting less nervous. They're just playing ball with us. and. Like, that's how we just got off to such a strong start. Right. I mean, I think you guys have a lot of familiarity with each other, obviously, from the JV, you yeah. know, and now and playing. I know you guys, you know, knowing knowing you guys personally here in the five towns, I'm sure you're joining some some Island Garden or show leagues or. or so, yeah, I mean, like, we've been playing together for a while. I mean, most of us, like, in school or out of school, I mean, like, we've all been playing even since middle school, since we've lived in the same neighborhood. And, like, we've all, like, we all know each other. We've been playing right. together for a while. 
How did you do in the uh, in JV? You guys lost in in the play. I mean, obviously, it was the semis in, quarters. Yeah, we lost to SAR in the That's, first round. In the, the first round. Okay, so the expectations coming into the season, where you know, is this like championship or bus? Obviously, you know, everyone wants that. But what 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 defines a, a good se successful season for you? I mean, uh, I mean, like our team, it has potential. I mean, like we have all the right pieces this year. Moko's been great coach for us. He's been putting in the right people at the right time. I mean, like, we've been playing great together. I mean, like, the expectations are high for us, especially high for me. I mean, like, senior year, obviously, I want it all. But I, th I think we have the potential to to go all the way this year. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Joe, last year, uh, the Yeshiva League season ended in uh, embarrassing fashion that I'm sure you try to put in the rearview mirror, the North yeah, yeah. that we don't like to talk about. But I'm going to bring it up because – uh, then you had Sarachek, and I, I think you really made a name for yourself. You really put yourself on the national scene there. You won that crucial inaugural play-in game against Frisch, and you guys went on to win a Tier 2 title. Do you, do you feel that that Tier 2 title was a good momentum booster as you head into this new season? I mean, it was definitely a great way to end the season. I mean, like, even for those past seniors, it was just good for them to, like, be on the court, get that win, and just, like, have, like, a good move on. I mean, like, we obviously weren't favored – to go anywhere as far as that. So obviously it was like a good as like mental boost for, I feel like most people. And I think it was also good for like our coach. Like it was just a good way to like end off and like get into the new season, like just like mentally thinking about it in the past. So, I mean, obviously I think it was a good thing. I don't think it was the like, like a huge thing, but I definitely think it was like a good part of like motivation into like this season. Right. Like a, a guy like Joe Aaron doesn't want to give tier two championship as much, you know, as, as much no, no. We're, we're, coming, we're coming for one this year we're coming right for right one. but by the way <laughs> win, winning you're not going two, for a playing game this year too uh, right exactly <laughs> win, win, winning tier two in saratech people don't understand that means you you didn't lose a game you you basically yeah. faced all your competition and you went through five and or whatever it was but yeah. but no absolutely i, I want to touch on something you said before and i was thinking as i was as in my mind for the show i think your coach moshe cohen who i know personally and, and Oren does as well great phenomenal coach better person than he is coach he's a great coach yeah. but i think have you played for him now will this be your fourth year playing for him yeah i played every year with him uh, all, right. all years so obviously you only have great things to say about Moshe, but no but talk about Moshe because he is you know he's calm on the court but he's such a competitor you know what are your practices like you know what 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 is what is the, the greatest strength that you think that Moshe brings to the drs program I mean, Moshe, I mean, like, he's just, like, a great fit for DRS. I mean, like, just, like, the way DRS works, he just, like, fits perfectly in. He's, like, he does everything right. He does what he needs to. And he, like, when he needs to boost you, he's he's up in your grill. He's giving you motivation, and he's, he's going to make you play harder. Like, if you want to play, you got to be on the court. You got to be, like, giving it your all, or, I mean, like, you're going to sit. Like, he's definitely he's definitely up on you, and he's definitely, like, pushing you to, like, be your best. Right. And do you, do you think – being the JV coach for you, and obviously he was elevated to the varsity coach last year was his first year. But do you feel that, you know, he he came in obviously knowing a lot of the JV kids, but he all, obviously, I think I remember like Gaby Spodek, Michael Solomon. I don't believe they started as JV player freshman yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, that year, our 10th, 9th grade year, they didn't start as much, but it's, it was definitely good as like he knew them. Like coming into this year is definitely like good that he knew he knew all of us. He's been playing with all of us. He knows like he knows how we all play. So I mean like it was definitely like a good like start for him that he like already knew our team and that he didn't have to like think over it or anything really. Right. Like you, you hit the ground running with the with the yeah. other and uh you know ready to go. Oren, go ahead. You're up. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of players uh in the league that have success at the J V level and it doesn't instantly translate to success once you make the move up to varsity but watching the mag and david tournament you know sar had some stalwart juniors playing in that championship game you guys had some juniors playing in that game what makes the drs juniors ready right off the bat to compete at this high level in your mind i mean the jv team those like three stars for them they've been playing basketball for a while through middle school through high school so i mean like they, they, they know this competition and they're ready for it. I mean, like they're also they're strong. They're they're like they they're built for varsity. They're not like still like weak in JV. Like their mindsets in varsity. Like they're they're ready for the varsity ball. They're not like weaking off in JV. Right. right. They're they're competitors ready to go. So so you beat. I mentioned earlier you you played um you know a really tough schedule in in the uh, MDY tournament. I know your first two games were SAR and Flatbush. Uh, Flatbush, yeah. We played right, Flatbush right. first and then SAR. Right, and then and then you um 
you lost, so you lose to SAR in a very close game in the yeah. uh, in the uh, you know the playing games. So obviously going into the championship, and I know personally, I know a lot of the parents. You know, SAR DRS, you guys have had this rivalry, even though you're in different conferences. But yeah. you know, Halper, you know, um, Weiss, all these guys that you compete against and even play with in different um, circumstances. But what was the biggest adjustment that you guys made going into the championship, knowing that you just played each other? You know two days before and you came up short in, in, in the championship were able to, uh, you know, come out victorious. Yeah. So, I mean, like in our, in the first game we played against them, we obviously were a little bit more tired because it was back to back games and we play, we're playing one of the top teams. So obviously it was tough. I mean, like we had, we had a great mindset coming in, but obviously you're going to be a little bit of fatigue and whatever, but our second game, like we, we know we could compete with them. And I mean, like we all just laid it out on the floor as a one it's good, go win or it's go big or go home. So like, we all like, we all went, we played our heart out. Like we got a couple injuries, even like Mike and Slamicki, like they both hurt right now. Hopefully they'll be back soon. So, I mean, like we all left it out on there and we just played our game and we ended up just taking it all. Well, I actually, it's funny. I, I actually told uh, to Michael Solomon that he needs to start playing with the guardian helmet because the kid is on the ground literally 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean, like he's taking charges all day for us. So, right. I mean, I think like, he takes he, just, he's, he's the best. Charges. He's the best. Yeah. He's, taking he's charges the, and layup lines. I think. I think yeah. He, he's doing it all day in practice. He's doing it. He's doing it all the time. He's the right. best. Wow. He, I mean, as tough as they come and that you, the toughness is really what, what one of the big strengths of your team. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely good to see. So, so you guys are going to have a, well, every team in the league has a long layoff now between one, once the season starts and, uh, and when the MDY tournament happened because uh, with, with the holidays and how they fall out. Yep. Um, do you guys feel, though, that you'll still have experiences from this tournament that you'll be able to take with you into the new season, even though it'll be a long time since you last played? In that yeah, I mean, so obviously I think this tournament's like great for everyone. It's a great learning experience and it's a great way to just start off the season without just jumping straight into the, like regular season. I mean, like you obviously could learn from like everything you do. Right. And now, like, now everyone's going to talk about you guys for weeks. Yeah. And now and like and then practice, like we're still practicing. So obviously like in those stuff, like wherever our weaknesses, we can work on it. Wherever our strengths are, we could just improve in it. So like playing in that preseason is just like a just like there's no like loss to it, just like a plus. So it's just going to help us go into the regular season. Right. It, it also, it's, it's funny. Actually, as I know, we're, we're definitely guaranteed uh, the, uh, the, the rematch, the third round. You, you actually could draw SAR in the uh, yeah. in two interconference games. We, we, play, uh, we play at SAR. Right. That's uh, I'm smelling already a Saturday night game. Like I could, I, I can imagine, right. That's, yeah. that's a prime time game, which could be a game of the week for us later in the season or, and I think that's uh Oh, definitely, you definitely. can count on it. So here, my my last question, and then we'll have Warren fire away with one. Is we always like to talk about you know great competitors. You know who who are the guys. So I, it's actually a two part question. First of all, tell me in your in your own home who is the best Aaron Ball player. That's first. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think I think it's probably my dad. Yeah, I mean, by like, the from way, all, from, from all I've heard, agreed. <laughs> I mean, like, I watch my brothers. I watch both of them. But from all I've heard, it's my dad, probably. Yeah. And by the way, if they had video or footage on them, and I think I think your dad has a little footage, but it's very uh, yeah, but yeah, he, he is a little. Right. He was he was dunking back in the day, a YU legend, a great ball player at MTA. But, okay, so we'll give your dad that. So now, which is a, probably the smartest answer, right? You know, honor the father. There you go. But tell me about, you know, who are three guys that you look at across the league or even, you know, could be in California or anyone, you know, out of town, someone you played against, the three toughest players that you feel are, you know, are on a level when you know you have to come and bring your best game to compete with them. Uh, later in the summer, I went to go try out for Maccabi Israel and I played with Sam Jacobson from uh, yeah, Right. Uh, he, he's great. He's just a great person, a great ball player. And I know when we play them, I hope we play them in and uh sarah check i hope that's that's gonna be a great game i mean like him and beach on they're just a great duo so i mean like obviously everyone's gonna have to step up to that and i mean like when i played with him like he, like when i played with him it was just like great to play with the type of player he is he's just great all around and he just does what you need and he's just a great big man um i'd probably say also ari halper i mean i've been playing with ari since sixth seventh grade for AU like I, and his dad Rafi he's been coaching us for a while so I'm like I know the type of ball player he is he's great he does everything he leaves his heart out it's just a great player and when we play them again I mean it's it's going to be a fun game and then one more um 
I mean, probably at Yale. I mean, like, I've also been playing with Yale for quite some time. I played with him this summer and in their camps and also in Hustle and Heart. I mean, like, he's phenomenal. He's a beast. He, he owns the paint. I mean, when we play him, we're going to have to step up big because he's just big and strong and we're going to have to we're going to have to put our bodies on it. Right. You have, those are all superstars. It's interesting that two of the guys are traditional big guys and you're kind of like more of a hybrid, you know, yeah, big but, guy, put the ball on the floor. But definitely all great ball players. And uh, yeah, yeah, they're great in their own right. Oren, what do you want to close with? Uh, I, I think you'll enjoy this question, Ari. Uh, Joe, we'll love to get your questions on uh, the inaugural season of playing with the shot clock. Uh, how is DRS preparing for that? Is that something that you're looking forward to? Um, I think, obviously, yeah, I think most, not most teams are gonna, because, I mean, like, a lot of teams have plays to just run the clock out, because it's never been, like, an issue before, so people would just run the clocks out late in game or fourth quarter or just, like, even, like, 30 seconds, like, just, like, hold the ball or whatever. So, I mean, like, us, we don't really play, like, with the mind of the shot clock, obviously, like, it's in the back of our head, but, like, we're not, like, oh, 35 seconds. But, I mean, like, it's, I think it's gonna help, like, most games and make it more competitive because late in games you can't just hold the ball anymore or run like a play to just hold the ball for 40 seconds so i think obviously it'll help like move the game more and keep it competitive like close and close all right well listen joe first of all congratulations again you. really a great ball player we always love seeing guys you know rise to the top superstars in big games and before you go any shout outs you have or anyone you want to say hello to Right. Uh, I'll just shout out Mike Solomon just because, like, this kid's just everywhere. I mean, like, I love him. He's taking charges for us. And shout out the whole DRS team. We're going to go all the way. Um, I have high hopes for us. Um, we're, just, we're a great team. We're all family. And hopefully we could just keep up the season. All right. Well, have a have a, a great rest of your week. And we wish Thank you, you nothing but ultimate success for the rest of the season. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. You too. All right. I thought he was going to end off with like a you can't handle the greenhouse chant. Yeah. You know what? He was he was great. And he's he look, he is a superstar in his. I mean, honestly, as far as families of basketball go from the the father, the mother to the brothers. Right. And, you know, I, I think there's a, I know there is a sister also. I never saw her play, but I'm just betting she was a good ball player also. But yeah. I mean, can you imagine the driveway? You know, oh, kids don't play in driveways anymore. They play in their sports courts and their indoor courts. But that's another story. But yeah, I can't. It, imagine. It's funny because I remember Ethan Aaron, and yeah. um, I remember his, his partner in crime on the court when he was playing for Rambam was Aaron Azos, and Aaron Azos is now the coach at Rambam. So Aaron Azos, when he's coaching against DRS, he has to be thinking to himself, "How am I not? How do I not have this guy?" Right, right, exactly. <laughs> True, but it's I it's tore it up with his brother. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they they're great, they're a great family. But that that was great. And we're, you know, as we as every every week, or I mean every other week when we do the podcast, we're gonna bring our our athlete, our our superstar of the week on, and we're gonna do that. And our next segment of the show is we're gonna go this week. We obviously don't have any games to preview or anything, but we're gonna go with our preseason. Well, not really, it's still preseason, I guess, power ranking. So I know there we came out. We have a, 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 what do you call it, a board, a committee who's helping put these uh, rankings together. So it's not just me. It's not Oren. It's, we have others as well to really kind of, you know, aggregate everything where we see. And, and between Oren and I, we probably watch way too much Yeshiva League basketball. So, you know, we know a lot what's going on, but there's, you know, obviously we don't get to see every game. But we're going to start it. We're going to go back from 20 to 1. Um, and, and we're going to start with a, a returning team to this season is Mag and Abraham from Brooklyn. They are back. Mag and Abraham Kings, I believe, is the nickname of the team. Yeah. They're back in the season. And uh, as they say, not going to lie, I don't really know much about them. But other they're, that they're from Brooklyn and they're probably going to play fast break and they're going to have a couple players who are just really great one-on-one -on -one players. But they're going to be 20 in our rankings because, you know, we just don't know much about them. So that's um, – the, the coming in at 20 is the Mag and Abraham Kings and the number 19 team, or I should say the next team, I'm not sure if we have 20 or 20. I think it's, is it 20 teams this 20, season? 20 okay. Years. So 19, we have the uh, Kushner Cobras, you know, Kushner has been, you know, a, a team that has kind of been in the bottom rankings for probably the last four to five years, if not further. Um, they just, you know, not, not going to be a team that probably beats any of the of teams ahead of them, meaning from like 15 and on, but they're going to compete with Rambam and probably MTA and, you know, teams like that. Um, do you know anything uh, specifically about Kushner? Yeah. So, so one thing that I do know for a fact is that they're uh, promoting a couple sophomores up to varsity. 
Oh, wow. And uh, I'm very interested to see that, not because it'll necessarily mean success for them for this year, but it shows that they're trying to grow something, you know, for the future. So uh, maybe two years down the road, these sophomores who are having varsity experience this year could really have, have an effect on the league two years from now. Yeah, so that's good to know. And then we have at number 18, we have Hank. Um, I don't remember his name. There's a big kid who was, I assume, a junior last year. Very athletic, big kid. Um, I, I don't recall the name, but he's big. He's, he's really talented. He was actually in the All-Star game. Um, a really good ball player. And, the, and they have they have some good ball players, Hank. And they're, they're a team that, like, you can't sleep on when you play them if you're one of the, if you're DRS in their division or mag and like they're going to give you a game and they're going to be competitive and they're going to be you know testy and they're going to give everything everything you got but they are at um you know at number 18 in our rankings and then we're going to I'm going to give you number 17 this is JEC what do we know about JEC and then I'll give you a, a little tidbit that I have about them well they do have a incoming coach who uh had a lot of success uh you took away my tidbit okay <laughs> coach in the JV program. I know he's near and dear to you. I'm a, I'm a big fan of his as well. Um, it, it's going to be an adjustment year for JEC. There's no doubt about it. New coach coming in. Uh, you know, uh, Kadosh is gone. Walsman is gone. Uh, I expect it to be a tough year for JEC, but uh, I, I, I've been surprised in the past before with JEC, you know, having an upset here and there. You know, I think last year they had this big win over Hafter, if you recall. Um, so they're definitely capable of surprising some people. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, and I'm going to give a shout out Ellie Grunberg, great coach, also a great person. He he is going to compete. He's going to roll up his sleeves. He still thinks he's the best kid player on the court as a coach. Even um, you know he's the king of the one on one game. You know, the, but the old man's one on one where you can you can't dribble or you can only go two steps or something. But he, he's gonna he's gonna will them to some victories. And seeing them in the preseason, they just look not athletic enough right now to compete with some of the teams who, you know, are going to go up and down, but they're, they're definitely a team that, you know, could rise throughout uh, the season at 16 uh, or 15. We have MTA again. I don't know much about MTA. You probably have a little more insight to them. I think we have a lot of people around the league who are overlooking MTA because of the, because of the dreadful season they had last year. And I'm hearing from people from all over that that's not going to be the case for the upcoming year. I think there's a lot of talent coming up from the JV team. Um, I, I think they still have that big uh, coming back, Josh Trehoff, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, oh yeah, I remember him. He was, yeah, number 34, if I remember. Yeah, so, so he's back. So, uh, and I got to be honest, I think MTA uh, can be in that conversation for that last uh, sixth place uh, playoff spot, you know, battling it out with uh, the likes of maybe Ori Strahl and Heschel. Right, and they haven't been in the playoffs in a, in, a, in a bunch of years. So that's, you know, definitely, as you know, get into the playoffs, sometimes that defines a successful season for a lot of teams. And once you're in the playoffs, you know anything can happen. The next team we have at 14 was a team you can't sleep on because we did last year, and I think the league did, because it's the Heschel Heat. They're a team that, you know, they're in the Yeshiva League, but a lot of the, the kids in that in the, in the school don't go to the same camps or play in the same leagues outside of the Yeshiva League. So a little unknown. They got a phenomenal coach who, uh, who really came in, I believe, last year. I don't know his name, but I just know he's great. Saw him firsthand once or twice. And really, it really I think they, over, they definitely overachieved last year. They had a, a great uh, season. Um, but this year they bring back a junior. Um, I forget his name, Judah or number 30. He was fine. Would that make sense? Yeah, he's going to he, – we know who you're talking about. The big guy, he's number 30. He was inside – I think he was number 30. He was an inside-out player, um, really, really, really good player. And I think Heschel, again, a team we don't we can't talk much about until we know what happens. And I think, you know, early last season they came into TABC and they beat TABC, who was one of the better teams in the league. So, you know, definitely we'll, we'll learn about them as they go on. I, I think they always use that to their advantage, the fact that they're an unknown. Yeah. Um, and, and I think, I think they always uh, – use their better sophomores in, in varsity. So uh, that's also an interesting right. tidbit. Correct. So, and then at 13, speaking of the unknown, we just know this is one of the most exciting schools that to, to travel on the road like nobody else, Waterbury Wolfpack. Um, they had a great ball player, junior last year, um, Alfazi, I believe. He's gone. Yeah, so he he signed an NIL deal. He's at the Jewish Culture School in Miami this year. So um, he's going to be there. But this is with Waterbury. You know they're going to be athletic. They're going to be competitors. They're going to be kids who come out. And, you know, they have such a great yeshiva over there where they do such tremendous work, you know, led by Rabbi Kalish. 
that they have new kids coming in, you know, from different different um, environments or different schools, and they just can ball. They're, they're a team that is going to compete and beat teams every game. They are just not going to quit. And do you know anything specific about the Waterbury players this year? Or I, I think similar to Heschel, they also are an unknown. Uh, you know, we just never know anything about them going into the new season, but they're they're well coached every year. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they're able to do what they do with the traveling – they don't care how far they have to go. They will go out and just ball, ball, ball. Right. And uh, last year, uh, they almost had one of the most shocking upsets in the playoffs, uh, almost knocking off Hafter. They yeah. lost, exactly. lost by one. Um, so, yeah, Alfazi, Alfazi is definitely a loss. But uh, they well, Waterbury always, always gets a new Alfazi. They always seem to have right. other players in the pipeline coming. It was an Alfazi. It was, you know, it's just it, they're going to have someone who's going to be a superstar. And then they're also the only team that didn't have to purchase shot clocks because all their games are on the road. So that was, uh, you know, they're going to be using that extra savings to uh, to recruit from the NIL portal, I guess. No, but they're they're great. So then we have number 12. We have uh, the YD Thunder. Um, saw YD in the MDY tournament. I believe you did as well. TABC played them. Ramaz played them. Yeah. So obviously, both saw. This is going to be a team, and I, and I told the kids after the game, they're going to get better as the season goes on because they have a lot of talent. They had a point guard. I believe he was a junior. I, I, again, I don't. We don't know the names yet because we've only seen them once, or I don't. At least phenomenal. He had handles. He was, you know, putting people on. You know, when they slip and you know the the oohs and the ahs. Great ball player, and they also have a lot of athletic players. Right now, what I think they are, they're just too much one on one. And I think as they progress in the season, you know, they're going to get better. Anything you saw at YD that, that uh, we should mention as well? Yeah, they started out the game against TABC on a 9-0 run. Uh, I think there's plenty of talent there. I think what their weakness will could ultimately be is lack of depth. Right. Uh, conditioning could be a problem with them down the stretch. But uh, I, I agree with you. I think they'll, they'll definitely get stronger as the season goes on. Yeah, for sure. And then we have number 11, Orius Rall. Uh, what is Orius Rall? What's their nickname? The Flames. The Flames. Okay, right, right. I know they have the jerseys where they they have the half white, half dark jerseys. So you never yeah. know if they're home or road. But they uh, they're you know they're led by W Foreman, who did a phenomenal job with them in his inaugural season uh, with them last year. He took them to the playoffs. And uh, he was my pick w, for coach of the year last year. Yeah, yeah. W was great. He was uh, a great, great coach, and and really, really brought to a lot of energy into that program. And they had to re- they have to replace a lot of players. They have Rose Zada who left. Um, um, uh, Rosen and uh, a bunch of other kids who, who are really strong, but they do return. At least I know for sure when Yerby grows their point guard and uh, Stern, who is a, a transfer from TABC, who wow, that kid can ball like you know. Yeah. And I think the Orius Roll game where those kids go, I think Orius Roll is really affected by W because a lot of those kids are like street ballers or you know, park ballers, and then all of a sudden they were playing within structure. And they were really good. And they're also a team that we don't kind of know about because they get kids from different schools potentially every year. But, you know, have you seen anything or heard anything about them uh, minus those two kids that I mentioned? Uh, I know that Stern is going to be on a tear this year. He 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 found instant success. To say, you know, I, I think yeah. I, I think he was added to the Orkansas <laughs> roster like 11 days before the league deadline. And it sounds like you remember very specifically, Oren. Yes, (laughs) for good reason. Uh, um, And and I think he played like two days after uh, against Frisch and he led all Ori Strahl scorers. So uh, it it was just amazing to see him, you know, just having the success that he had right off the bat. And uh, I I just think this is a team that can't be underestimated. You know, granted, they lost a lot of seniors, but there could be some players that we don't know about who could be under the radar. Uh, I know Coach Oz asks on a regular basis if uh, TABC could re-sign Stern, but uh, I think I think that ship has sailed. Right, right, all right. Well, listen, you never know. Kids come back for it; they go to different schools. So, yeah, they're going to be a great team, to, a good, a really good team that we're going to again learn more about. The next team is, you know, this is a team that wasn't mentioned in, in our podcast last year this early, but this is a team. There is a rebuilding year. It's the Flatbush Falcons at number ten. Um, what we do know is that Matt Malk, Matthew Malk, Matt Malk doesn't rebuild he reloads he he tells those kids they better be ready to play his style of game in your face the defense is is really what leads to their offense um and he's also a phenomenal coach and they're they're you know there was talk with them but they were, they were going to have some of their sophomores come up and play varsity and they have some really really talented sophomores they chose to stay down so right now flappers is you know sammy jamal who's been on the team since his freshman year i think i think this is a big year for him he's is he finally a senior? I think he's a junior. He's a junior. Okay, like yeah. I said, when Ricky started, Haddad is probably 
probably the Brett Ritchie had it as a good team. ball player. But I think Sammy Jamal, this is probably the first time in, in his three years he could say this is probably his team, and he's going to really have to shine. And they struggled in the uh, MDY tournament, but, you know, shockingly enough, they had the two toughest uh, games to play also. But uh, that's what happens when your rival puts the tournament together. You know, we, <laughs> we, you got to give Flappers their, uh, their their chances to really succeed. But, you know, what do you see from them? Do you, you Anything, uh, you know, that, but besides Matt having his work cut out? With them? Yeah, I, I think they have. I think they have a lot of learning to do uh, these next couple of months uh, as the season gets underway. But uh, I've known Matt Malk since uh, we were both at Hillel together. So I can never count out a team that's led by coach Matt Malk. Right. And so I'm not starting now. And uh, you know, similar to other schools that we've mentioned, I think uh, Flatbush. Yes. They won't be the Flatbush Falcons of last year. I think we can all agree there, but uh, Thankfully for the rest of the league. Yes. Right. So they're still <laughs> capable of a lot in terms of, you know, finishing with a winning record. And then once it's playoff time, anything can happen. Right. And I think as we move up in the rankings, I think we both agree this year, there's not a Mag and a David and Flatbush, meaning where Mag and David Flatbush were clearly ahead of tier by themselves last year. And we talked about it on the podcast all the time. And I think this year, there's probably right six or seven teams as we get in who are really favorites or co-favorites to not co-favorites but are, are in contention to, to win the championship so this year is definitely a, a little more um you know even keeled across the league then at number nine we have uh, the Hafter hawks who had uh, a semi-final run last year they ended up losing to mag and david in the playoffs um they lost a lot of firepower i believe they lost uh, every key contributor minus they bring back uh ness salem the um the junior who's now a senior really really strong ball player um, and they bring up a JV, a strong JV squad that they had last year. Nate Meyer, uh, JoJo Kaplan, and they're also starting uh, having a sophomore come up, um, Asher Freundly. So they're going to be a team where they're going to get better throughout the season. If, if you're going to play them, you know, probably earlier on, they're going to have to get acclimated with each other. But Joey Honey, good coach. But I, I think it's going to be they're going to be at number nine in that in that seven to nine range until you know they really you know beat someone. What do you, what do you see from Hafter? Yeah. I feel like this is a recurring theme every season where Hafter is maybe not ranked so high, but then they put everyone on notice at some point in the season, whether that can happen this year, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but you know, Joey's as good as it gets. So, uh, I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, we could see Hafter, uh, you know, definitely in the playoffs, uh, and we'll have to see what happens, you know, come February, March time. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then at, at number eight, we have the uh, the North Shore. What are they now? Lions. I think Lions. Right. Yeah. He went from stars to Not Lions. Not the stars anymore. Right. So they are a team that 100% is going to get better. We we saw, the Ramada saw them in the preseason tournament, and they played Mag and David. They had a tough, tough early matchup also. They have a lot of, a, a lot of talent, really, really good. Uh, Charlie Sassoon, the point guard, is a really strong player. Um, Cohen is really good. And then they had this this big, I think, number 34. I don't uh, I think he was Cohen also, maybe. But a lot of talent. We go, you know, Shalom uh, does a phenomenal job with them. And they're going to be a strong team. And I think also a team that's going to get better. But they have a, a lot of talent. And they were a strong JV team last year as well. But at number eight, I have North Shore. What, what do you see from them as far as the season? Yeah, I think all those points are true, but at the same time, we do have have to acknowledge the fact that the dream team is gone. Yeah, uh, Zarka, Carmilli, Abizade. So uh, you know, although so- I saw, although Zarka's now Zarka and Carmilli are now assistant coaches. Right. So right. I'm at the game, I go, you don't have any more eligibility. Like you're not putting on the uh, your, your uniforms. Like no, we're just coaching. I'm like. They're there, they're, awesome. they're there for insurance, or to, right. to at least, or to at least keep some of the fire going, in a sense. Yeah, it was actually the first time I didn't see Jordan Zarka with a wrap around his hand or his knee or something. He looked like, you know, he, he's enjoying his offseason. He's in great shape. And, you know, obviously it's great to see come back to the program. And really that just shows you the connection he has. They have with Coach Shalom and the job that he does there. So they're at number eight. At number seven, we have the Frisch Cougars. So Frisch is a team where they have they have a big impact player coming in, Isaac Stepner, who was a freshman last year, obviously a sophomore this year. Could have played on JV if he did. They Frisch would probably be the favorites to win the JV championship, but he made a big decision that you know he wanted to play varsity. Obviously, no one questioned his ability and his capability of, of being a superstar as a sophomore. I think the key to Frisch is really their senior class. Um, Shafter, who's a, who's a, who was a really strong player last year, started the season coming off the bench, but then by the end of the year in the playoffs, I think he was starting. Um, and you know, it's him and, and some others. I think their seniors are going to really have to 
get going because I don't know, you know, at seven, I think that that's where they should be, but they're going to, they're going to be strong, but you know, you know, them obviously being in the backyard over there in New Jersey. What do you, what do you see from them? I think they can beat anyone on any given night. Uh, I think it's a team that, uh, you know, people will say this is not the strongest first team we've seen in recent memory, but you know, uh, everyone should still be on high alert for them. Um, I think Isaac Stepner will be an impact player on varsity right away. Max Schachter proved that he's elite last year. So I expect much of the same. And uh, yeah, I, I think if Frisch was in the other division, they'd be making a lot more noise. Uh, it's just the fact that they're in the tougher division this year. I, I agree with that. I, I think I think this year, I never know Western Eastern because we're all in the Eastern uh, zone, but in the East, the the Western Conference is the TABC, the Frischness. And I think this this year, the Western is probably stronger than the East Eastern division if on paper, you know, from the as far as the top tier teams. But you know, they're a really solid team. At number six, we have the Hillel Heat. Um, and they're gonna be really good. Their JV team was really strong. They bring back Braha, um, who was a junior last year, senior this year, one of the best pure score, scorers in, in Yeshiva basketball. And they have Bruce Epstein, a couple big guys who coming up from the JV, and you know, Tsvi Goldberg, who's been around for uh for a long time, great coach, although he keeps looking younger every year, but that's another story. But uh Hillel, Hillel you know them, but I think they're going to be great. And I think at number six, this is kind of where I start my tier of the top teams who, yeah. who are, you know, as far as, you know, favorites to, or competitors to win the championship. What do you, what do you see from Hillel? Braha is a knockdown shooter. Uh, every time he releases the ball, I think it's going in. Um, you know, there's another senior, Joey Kasten, who has plenty of talent and energy, had had a role last year among that varsity team. And I think the reason why Tsvi uh, said, I'm not hanging it up yet, because he saw that he was getting these promising juniors and Epstein, Tara and Tobias. Yeah, um, really. They have a lot of firepower. Big, they're big, they're athletic, and they yeah. have – it's going to be how they, how they mesh. Because I think Braha – played varsity as a sophomore uh, yeah yeah towards the end right so he never really played i mean obviously in deal he played with these guys but he didn't play in the structure of the she league you know with with, with epstein and Tehran and, and those kids so we'll have and to see. it's not it's not something <laughs> that we see often but hillel could be on a higher tier these this season than mag and david and flatbush yeah yeah no no they they are and it's funny as we go to number five we have the mag and david warriors so Mag and David, obviously, last year, they, they won 98%. I'm not a mathematician, but I think they lost two games all year, you know, maybe three. They were phenomenal. They they graduated so much Smecky, Haber, Sardar, um, really a, 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 such a strong nucleus of, 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 of team offense, defense. They were just unbelievable, and they went through everything. And ultimately, they, they won the Yeshiva League um, championship and almost, you know, did the double and, and won Sarachek, and they lost in a classic overtime game to uh to eula but the the key for Maggie is we know josh abbott is a superstar scorer he is phenomenal i think the key for them is phil share because phil share last year as the point guard and he did his role to perfection he was the glue guy he was the guy who didn't need to take shots but when he needed a big shot he could hit it his d's a great defender but now he needs to elevate and he has the capability his game to really be, you know, Batman and Robin with, with Shabbat because he can't just be their fifth, you know, fifth or fourth option. He's got to be their second or first option in some instances. But, you know, they're going to have to bring up their other players. And, and you know, we know the coaching of, of Spike and Benny and Mozart. They're awesome. But, you know, what do you see from Magan as – as I don't want to say they're the word down here because you don't want to give Spike any, you know, fuel. But what do you see from Magan this year as we have at number five? Anything is possible when, in my opinion – you have the best player in the league in Josh Shabbat. Um, Definitely I, the best pure scorer. There's, yeah. I agree with that for sure. Uh, I, I agree with you that Phil Schur is going to have to step into the spotlight a lot more this season. I think we also have to keep our eyes out for Max Abed. I think, uh, you know, he's someone who was kind of in and out of the rotation a little bit last year. But JB, he was an impact player. His sophomore yeah. Remember, yes. So I expect him to have more of a starring role this year. And, uh, Listen, uh, Spike has his work cut out for him, but uh, he never backs off from a challenge. So yeah. uh, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, yeah. Magan compete, uh, compete among the top again this year. 
Yeah, and now I'm going to, for our next four and three, I'm going to let you talk about four. I'm going to talk about three. You know, you start at number four. I think we have this team, the Ramaz Rams. So what do you what do you see from them coming into the season uh, and have you seen over the years, you know, to make them, you know, start to start the season at number four? So, so it's actually funny. In my initial rankings, I had Ramaz as my number one team. Um, I think Scott is among the best of the best in terms of coaching in our league. Uh, you know, obviously this team was a JV finalist two years ago and uh, T- had TABC on the ropes uh, during certain points in that game. Um, I think Nate Sugar might be the best three-point shooter in the league. I thought you were going to say the best name in the league. I mean, that's yeah, the ball. Yeah. Well, it's actually funny. I was looking at some rosters earlier in the day and I saw in the hockey league that there was a, <laughs> there was a team that had a kid with the first name Yahoo. And I was thinking no one's beating that. Oh, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but I'll have Josh Cass uh, 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 mention that on his podcast. <laughs> um, but, you know, as I said, Nate Sugar, I think is the best three-point shooter in the league. I really think this is going to be a breakout year for someone like Bobby Segura. I, uh, you know, last year, you know, he proved that he belonged, but I think this year he needs to really, you know, now that Milan Kushner is out, uh, Bobby Segura needs to develop more of a leadership role for this Ramaz team. I think he's the X factor for me. Um, you know, obviously n- nobody knows this team be- better than you do. So I hope I'm being accurate in my No, no, no that's why I'm going to talk about the next team more. This is right, good. right, right. But uh, I think uh, Ramaz is going to be at the top for a long period of time throughout the season between them, SAR, TABC. It's going to be a dogfight throughout the year. Yeah. And actually that you bring an interesting point. Um, a lot of what's going to happen is the way the schedule comes out. Right. So, you know, does TABC play? Um, SAR twice this year. Does ha- does Ramaz play um, Frisch twice this year? Like who you get as your as your two games or inter your out of conference games really makes the difference because it's there's no balanced schedule, right? It's a matter of the two conference teams you're playing out out of conference. They could be superpowers or they could be mediocre. You don't know. There's a whole formula, but that that's a good point. So at number three, I have the TABC so TABC Storm. So ironically enough, I had them at number one in my preseason ranking. So we have the the mutual admiration for each other's uh, you know teams. But TABC and I saw them in um, obviously recently just at the Mag and David tournament. So we know Ayal Ayal Kindler, top two three player, top one. He's he's in the conversation for best player in the league. Um, you know we had him on our show last year. Superstar, super kid, and he's amazing. What what I saw and also in the in the TABC program, their point guard, uh, Sammy Mandel or Yona Mandel. Yona Mandel. Yona Mandel, great player who was injured actually um, in the MDY tournament. Um, in the, in in didn't get to be show his full. You weren't at full strength, but I think the one player who I knew was good was Borgen, uh, number thirteen, who's the uh, junior now. I think that this is an element to a team that two years ago won the JV championship, as you mentioned against Ramaz. Uh, Borgen, I don't think wasn't even if he played was not much of a factor his freshman year but with coach Oz being you know the elite of the elite you know what do you see from Borgen you know I view him as the x factor because I think his potential is kind of superstar level what do you see him you know contributing to TABC this year yeah I think Borgen and Faber are uh two juniors who did not have much of a role two years ago that will have a role on this team this year uh Amazing work ethics. Uh, Faber's a knockdown shooter. I think he'll be that uh, that three point weapon that they look to that they had last year in Gurren, but we know that Gurren's gone now. And Borgen is just going to keep getting better and better and better. And uh, I think the league better watch out for that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So that that that's that number three is TABC. At yeah, number two, we have the uh, the SAR Sting. So obviously. Whoever won that game between them and DRS was going to be number one. But I will tell you this about SAR. Um, they are, are going to be phenomenal. We knew that coming in. That's no no, no surprise. But they had a gauntlet of schedule in the uh, the um, MDY tournament. They played TABC. They beat they beat, um, they beat Ramaz handily. They beat um, – who else did they play? They played – they all their games – They beat were, DRS in the first match. Right, right. DRS. In the first, like, they, they played already. If they would have won that tournament – which they almost did. It was an overtime, you know, one point, two point game. But what what I think about SAR, and this was the question two years ago, but I already see it kind of coming into effect. And I think that's Coach Rafi Halpert was two years ago. They had all this talent, but they didn't gel as 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 a you know a cohesive unit. And I think that's also when you're a freshman sophomore as opposed to a junior senior, you kind of have a little more maturity about you know team basketball. But they have Sam Weiss, who again top three player in the league, also. Him and Shabbat, you know, probably in Braha, as far as pure scorers, 
you know, unbelievable. And I think the key, and obviously Ari Halford is a superstar, has been since, you know, probably first grade if he hadn't played earlier. But um, they have a really, really strong team. The key to this team is there was a player in the team, and this is a great story, lesson to all the kids out there, um, 22. I don't know his name, but he's a big kid. And all of a sudden I said, you know, I've seen SAR play for the past four or five years, as you have. It's like, who is this kid? He said he was the manager last year. And he came, he's a starter now. I, I, he was number 22, or he was wearing 22 in the preseason tournament. Phenomenal ball player. And he is, that's one thing they didn't really, they don't really have that many bigs. I think uh, Caleb Eden is big. He's not really an interior, you know, presence. Um, they're going to be really strong. And I think Halpert and Weiss, is, as far as duo, duos go, you know, no, no better than that. But what do you, what do you see from SAR as far as their potential? Um, I think Ari Halpert is maybe the best junior in the league this year. Um, Sam Weiss is a superstar, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Rafi, the way Rafi works those boys to the gun, like it, it's just an amazing, amazing thing to see. Um, I, I think also with, with SAR, I, I think they kind of had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder going into the Mag and David tournament. Cause I think in the initial preseason rankings, they were ranked number six. Um, so uh, they? They were six. yeah, yeah. So I think they, I, I think they gave everyone, uh, you know, Gave everyone, I don't think they were uh, that low. I don't think we'll, we'll have to check. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to look back to the right. We'll have to look back on that. But uh, they they definitely put everyone on notice, and uh, they told us, yeah, we're 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 in we're in the fresh Ramon, we're in the TABC Ramaz tier. So you better oh, absolutely. They also they had kids who again they had numbered, and again I'm saying numbers because I don't know if everyone had uniforms, or, but they had number two who came off the bench, a good shooter. They had some kid players who like you don't necessarily remember from the JV or maybe didn't either make the team or have roles. That they're gonna they're gonna step into it and, and be, yeah you know, and obviously I, I'm 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 very fascinated to, to see how the the father son uh, coaching dynamic works out. Uh, I don't think yeah, we've well, seen that. I don't think we've seen that since uh, Austin and Doc Rivers in the NBA. Yeah, well, it's funny, I told Rafi, and this I, I actually coached my son when he was in JV. I said the the best way to coach your son is if he's a superstar or the fifth or the last player in the team. You know, this way you have, there's no, like, when you're in that middle, you know, you're always going to be a dad to your son, but there's no question Ari Halpert should only come off the court when he, you know, is tired or has foul trouble, right? Everyone knows he's, like you said, I, I agree, best junior in the league. And he's in, it, it didn't even, you wouldn't even know that's his dad or, or son out there. They're just both great competitors and, uh, you know, they have really high aspirations for the season. So at number one, we obviously have the uh, the DRS uh, Wildcats. They're number one on the, uh, at the rankings right now. And I think they are just a really talented team. And I think they have uh, having the continuity with Moshe Cohen as coaching those kids from JV to varsity. And Joe said this, um, you know, at the beginning of the show, they, they hit the ground running. They know, they know what Moshe wants. They know kind of the rotations and the roles and everything. And they know the system. And then you have Joe Aaron, who, Again, superstar, one of the top players in the league, and then that junior class, and and one of one of the really unheralded players of this league is uh, Saidi. Saidi, yeah. yeah, he's a really he can score twenty five points. He can you know rebound. He's a big point guard, and again between him, Joe can handle the ball. Gaby Spodak, Michael and they're Spodak. really not selfish. Yeah, no, 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 and I think that's what Joe said. Right, they've been playing together for so long, and and, and you heard the shout outs like it's there's there's just that. You know, it's it's a it's a band of brothers there, right? They really the DRS. You know, one of the best fan bases that in TABC probably best fan bases that there are to just really support their their team. And I think they have that. And they're they're number one. But again, I think as we bring our rankings and we'll as we get through the season, this is going to shake up a lot. There's no MDY or flopper staying one two the whole season. DRS is one. They could be five in three weeks, four weeks once the season gets rolling. Um, but I think there's a lot of excitement with Yeshiva League basketball. And we and I think we're going to see a lot right after after the, the, the Sukkot break. You're going to have the two big tournaments. You're going to have the Shalhevik Globerman tournament and you're going to have the next week. Um, you're going to have the Cooper tournament, which is great perspective because Ramaz will be at the Shalhevik tournament. TABC will be at the Cooper tournament. We're going to see so many of these teams, which is great. So I think, you know, those are our rankings for the for the for the uh, week where we are now. And I think, you know, that's pretty much a show. We're going to have a great season. We're going to really replicate, do a lot of the stuff we did last year with different segments, um, you know, it's plays of the week and, you know, really the the games of the week and, and stuff like that. And, you know, we're here for the fans, for the, uh, you know, really to, to, to grow Yeshiva League basketball as, as uh, you know, Yeshiva League Pass has done. Like I tell everyone all the time, I'm like, 
the Shiva League Pass is phenomenal. You can get your stats, you get your players game. Everyone gets recognition and they do a really great job and all the contributors who help make that um, part of it. But want to end the show with obviously getting back to our sponsors. Holy schnitzel, got to get a bagel. They are just, uh, you know, great. And they, the support that they they do to put into this show and, and um, you know, really get out and, and find out how you can, uh, you know, get there to eat there, get the Uber Eats. And you know, any last second, um, you know, things you wanted to uh, say before we sign off, Warren? I think it's going to be a very interesting season. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of up and down, as you mentioned, in terms of the rankings. Um, I, I think it's also interesting with the tournaments coming up. You know, we're, we used to look at them as preseason tournaments, but now because, you know, the season's starting a little bit later, they're kind of going to be depicted now as more in-season tournaments. Yeah, they, because I know, right, you have to, like, Teams are going to be playing before, for sure, in, in, the, in the Cooper tournament. They're going to be because the Shall Have a tournament is November sixth, the sixth to tenth. The Cooper is the probably the thirteenth to twenty uh, set, whatever 15th, that. Yeah. So right, you're going to be going right away, and I think that's great. That's why the NBY preseason tournament is so important. You get real games right off the bat. You got to be prepared. You got to show you know what you're about, and, and I think it's going to be a great season. It's it's uh you know we're not going to give our championship prediction because there's. Honestly, I don't even have one. I, mean, I think yeah. it, it's it's really wide open this year, um, and it, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And this is um, the Yeshiva League Pass Tip Off Podcast, episode number one. Looking forward to a great season. And uh, you know, hit us up online. Let us know what we agree with. The rankings are going to be posted. And uh, you know, we we love seeing teams that we don't know about. We admittedly so don't know every team. You know, come in in, in rise and fall in the rankings, and uh, we'll talk about it. So I'm Ari Wickes for Oren Glickman. That's episode one, and we will see you back for episode two.